1 John 3, verses 4 through 6. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. This passage of scripture here uh, really is helpful in uh, a more modern translation. I'm using the English Standard Version uh, of the scripture, that, that translation. And I think it makes a difference here. When you read this in the King James, uh, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Uh, in other words, the, the difference is, uh, in an older translation, in the King James particularly, it seems as though if you sin one time, if you commit a sin, then you are practicing lawlessness. And that's not what John is saying. Uh, John has already acknowledged in chapter 1 that believers, Christians, are going to sin. And so he says here, and this is a better translation, everyone who makes a practice of sinning, makes a practice. And who who's included in that? Well, everybody's included in that. doesn't matter if you think you're above it or not. The fact of the matter is, whoever, everyone, makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Why is that? Because sin is uh, lawless. Sin is without law. Sin is the idea of being in rebellion to the law. And so there is a spirit of uh, rebellion uh, to authority here. So rebellion to authority in this idea here. And John's not, again, John's not saying if you if you sin one time does not make you necessarily lawless in, in that idea. But but if you make a practice, and, and here's here's the idea, that is habit. If you make a habit or a lifestyle of sinning, if you are living in continuous ongoing sin, then you are practicing lawlessness and, and practicing that spirit of rebellion to authority. And so, uh, you know, one one author said, Karen Job said, you know, if, if, if that is the case, uh, that, that you are living in that way, deliberately and vigorously uh, sinning and, and rejecting the idea of repentance, then don't expect to be able to stand in confidence uh, under the authority of Christ on the last day of judgment. Because it reveals in your heart uh, a rejection to God's authority, and so if you can't submit to His authority in this life, then why would we? Why would you think that you're going to submit to His authority in the next life? Uh, okay, so verse five: You know that He, that's Jesus, appeared in order to what? Take away sins. Okay, so think back to uh, the book of John in John chapter one and verse twenty-nine. Uh, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold, the Lamb who does what? The Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. How can he do that? Well, in him, in Jesus, there is no sin. Period. This is, again, emphasize period. There is no sin. In Jesus, there is no trace of sin. Uh, Hebrews uh, 4 and verse 15 tells us clearly that, that Christ did not sin. He was tempted, but he never sinned. No one who abides in him, okay, this is, see the connections here, no one who abides in Jesus keeps on sinning. And this again is where uh, this translation is so helpful uh, because it's, it's this present tense idea that's in the Greek translation here. This present tense keeps on sinning, continuous, ongoing, practicing, habit, lifestyle of sinning. No one who abides in Jesus keeps on sinning. You can't do both. And again, when you think about abide, we've already talked about this. They go back to God, John's gospel and uh, John 15. Uh, you cannot abide in Christ. Uh, and keep on sinning. The, the practice has to change. These two do not equal one another, okay? You cannot do both. No one who keeps on sinning, who practices ongoing continuous sin, 
has either seen him, that is, again, Jesus, or even knows him. So John's saying, look, look, if you practice sin, if you just are constantly sinning and have this habit of sinning all the time, you're not repenting, you're not confessing, you're not being sanctified and purified, then there's an issue. And the issue is simply that you've not even seen Jesus and you don't know Jesus. So listen, church, if I mean, it's, it's again, we can't see the heart, but man, the evidence is right here. The handwriting's on the wall. If if you're practicing sin and keeping on sinning, then, then John's saying, you don't even know Jesus, and, and there needs to be a heart transformation. That's your, that's your big uh, holdup, is, is you're not actually born again, in other words. Mm-hmm.